Adesh Akoy from Agile TV at the Agile Development Practices Conference. And um, right now I'm with Ken Johnston from Microsoft, who's just given an excellent keynote speech about the, the blurring lines between dev, test, and ops. But um, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Oh, sure, it's my pleasure. Cool, so um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, well, I'm a program manager at Microsoft on Bing, and uh, I work on data quality and measurement. And so it's really this fascinating job where, where we literally spend time thinking about how to measure the quality of the data. If you think about a search engine, it's not just about how quickly you get responses back to the user, but it's whether or not it's the right response, okay. and that that response actually has the correct information that the user wants. So we're constantly coming up with new ways of measuring uh, the quality of the data we have, the quality of the user experience, and, um, <clears throat> and again, that varies. I mean, if some, I'll, I'll give you one quick example. If somebody were to search for, say, uh, uh, Caesar's Palace, and they're here in Vegas, you might want to present them different information than if, say, they're in Paris, and they're searching for Caesar's Palace. Okay. And so those are kinds of the things we have to think about. What's the user intent? What's the experience like? And it's fascinating. It's just fun to, to take all of those years of software testing experience I have and apply it to how do we improve the experience of the user by, by investing in a better set of data and a better quality experience. Okay. So I noticed there, I mean, a number of times you mentioned quality. So mm -hmm. it seems that quality <coughs> is a big thing, rightfully so. How do organizations go about ensuring that they have quality and providing the right level of quality? Well, you know, kind of like I said in the talk, my perspective is a bit different probably than, than, a, than a lot of people because I'm working on a, I've worked in services so long and I'm literally working in the cloud. I'm working in very rapid agile development where we're, we're developing and releasing and, and updating things constantly. And you know, and this is not uncommon, it's not just Microsoft with Bing. I mean, we hear, you know, other companies, whether they're Netflix, Google, Facebook, all of them do these kinds of rapid deployments. So I'm in this different perspective, and the thing that I like to tell people is that quality isn't static these days. Okay. Quality is constantly evolving, and it evolves in two, two variants. One is the quality of what you have, and the other one is the expectation of the users. So because the competition is so rapid today, the user's expectations change, and quality is relative. Uh, so if I have a great, a great cell phone five years ago, couldn't hold a candle, even if it was bug-free, to the phones of today. So you've got to keep that in mind. And so we're constantly measuring quality in production, and that's really where it's at. You have to measure and derive the current state of quality, and that's more where the focus is instead of testing quality up front. I mean, you still test, but you have to derive quality because it's, because it's, even if you don't change, mm. the expectation and the ecosystem changes. So that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. So, I mean, do you have any tips for any organization out there? Because like you said, you know, we live in an environment or in a world right now where expectations are constantly changing and therefore that quality needs to constantly change to meet that expectation mm -hmm. or even exceed that expectation. What type of strategies or, or things can people do to make sure that they're staying on top of that and in effect staying ahead of the game in terms of their quality? Um, well, the main thing that I emphasize both internally inside of Microsoft and with other partners I talk to is, is I really talk about instrument the snot out of your code. I mean, storage is relatively cheap these days. We know about the Amazon clouds, the Google clouds, Microsoft clouds, and storage is relatively cheap. Yeah. And so you, if you have to measure quality on an ongoing basis and analyze it over time, you have to instrument very many aspects of your code. There's this guy at Microsoft that, uh, that does a talk, uh, Dave Campbell, and uh, he talks about ambient data. So if you just Bing him, because I'd rather you Bing him than Google him. And if you just Bing uh, Dave Campbell and ambient data, he talks about this notion that we live in a world where there's data all around us. Okay. And so the, the accelerometer on your cell phone, the apps on your cell phone, the, the RFIDs and products and stuff, there is so much data out there that we're now getting into a world where we're analyzing it. And so you just have to think about how do I instrument so that I can analyze the problems that I don't even know I need to look at today in the future. So that's, you know, it's kind of a lot like testing where you would think about, I have to test for this scenario, okay. I have to test for this case. Instead you say, what do I have to instrument so that I get the signal in case there's a problem, now mm -hmm. I can debug it. And so that's kind of where, where I'm at these days. Okay. So I know you mentioned there about you know, releasing regularly and rapid. In your talk, you mentioned about rapid release. How often are you guys deploying and releasing code? 
Um, it varies, um, and it kind of like with other with other major cloud providers, some portions. It might be a major platform change, could take months of development. Uh, you might have several iterations within that. And then there are pieces where, well, I, I can say that we make changes every day okay. to Bing in production. So every day there's some change in, wow. well, what can I say, way more than one <laughs> <laughs> per day. So, you know, we're, we're right in there uh, uh, with the, the, all the other top uh, cloud and agile companies out there in terms of that. But you know, yeah, you, you look at the change that you're making, you look mm -hmm. at the risk associated with it, and you know, small changes, easy enough to do fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. Bigger changes or architecture changes, you have to take a little more time and you have to work, on, work out how you release those. So uh, that's why I always talk about risk. What's the risk of this release? How do we minimize the risk but maximize our ability to ship? So Because mm -hmm. I would rather ship the exact perfect day, then delay by a week for no good reason. Okay. Now, that's kind of into agile. It's like it's good enough, it's done enough, let's try it, and if we can try it in a way that controls risk, great. Like, you know, one of the things we do quite often is we might roll out to a small percentage of users. Okay. Well, that way if it's not very good, we didn't mess up very much of the experience. Same thing that our competition does, or like mm -hmm. Facebook. You might have opt-in, opt-in. If you remember, Facebook has that timeline feature. Well, they had people opt in for a while. That's a risk mitigation technique. So in case there were problems, uh, oh, you opted in, therefore you accepted a slightly different risk perspective than somebody that didn't. So you have all these different techniques that you can use, so it allows you to ship. Uh, the other concept that we use is what's the minimum viable product that you can now get into production and start using that telemetry to find those last few bugs or that key missing feature, and you really want to focus on that. So it sounds like the strategy is geared towards getting rapid feedback so that we can actually work out and be assured that we're providing the right product, the right quality, mm -hmm. and yeah. even get some ideas about how we can even enhance it. Right. It's all about getting the telemetry, getting the users to tell you what they want. It's, and again, because it's a services world, you can make all of these updates. Even if it's an app from an app store, you can ship a handful of features and a handful of levels, get mm. some feedback, and you can add a little bit more a little later when you understand that, hey, this is working and the customer seem to like this experience, let's go further in that direction. So it's a really great opportunity and, and uh, we have this concept uh, that we talk in the data world about data scientists, people that just sit there and look at stuff and look mm. for both missing features, defects, algorithms, opportunities to, to improve the product. And that's kind of where I see quality assurance uh, shifting and where I think Agile development, because of the rapid iteration, can really respond because mm. you get to have, you know, imagine you're, you're on a one-week sprint, but you're getting updates every week, so you can now adjust your next week sprint to optimize for the, for the bugs that you missed or optimize for the feature that you're seeing. Hey, everybody's trying to use this feature. We should probably do that one next. Mm. <laughs> Okay, cool. So I know you. Um, I know we've just only got two minutes left. Uh, you've mentioned a bit about agile. Um, if you can quickly just talk to how long you guys have been using agile at Microsoft and where you see the future of agile going. Um, you know, I mean, to be you know, in the keynote, I kind of joked around that oh, we're all waterfally and stuff. Really, you know, we've been experimenting with agile at Microsoft for six, seven, eight years. Uh, I would say that there are. And it was more, you know, pockets. Uh, I would say that it's very strong, and more than more than just a corner of Microsoft. It's large organizations now are fully invested in agile development mm -hmm. techniques. It, again, it doesn't really apply perfectly for some of our products, especially in some of the enterprise space or some of the hypercomputing scenarios where you've got these massive computers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work quite as well there. Uh, but you know. I've, I've said, you know, Bing, it works really well because we're in the consumer space. We've got tough competition. It's very iterative in nature. So you've got a lot of these places where it applies. So we're using it more and more, and we're finding more places where it applies. Cool. Ken, really appreciate your time and sharing your information and experience with us. So thank you very much. You bet. <laughs>